we had a group that met for coffee pretty much every morning at about 10.30 Newfoundland time. And as the first aircraft hit, I went down and told the group what had happened and uh, returned to my office because uh, obviously I wasn't going to make coffee that day. We turned on um, CNN in our lunchroom and we had it on just about the time that the second aircraft hit the World Trade Center. And by then we pretty much figured, okay, this is not an accident. This is an intentional event. And from there we sat back and basically and waited for a little bit just to see what the reaction was going to be. Shortly after the second aircraft hit, we told airport management that we may expect a large number of diversions if the Americans close their airspace. Uh, and very shortly after that, the first announcement came out that American aircraft or aircraft bound for the U.S. were going to be instructed to go to the nearest suitable airport and land. As the way the traffic flow in the North Atlantic works, at that time of the day, most of the aircraft on the North Atlantic are headed from Europe to North America. And for that reason, Gander was the nearest suitable airport. At the time, we weren't really anticipating how many aircraft were going. We knew there was a significant number of aircraft on the North Atlantic. Of course, some of them turned around and went back to Europe. Most of them continued. We had no real idea of what number were going to come. The only way that we had an idea of what number could potentially come was in preparation for the Y2K problem at the turn of the millennium. We had done some calculations of how many wide-body aircraft Gander could accept if the need came to park a large number of aircraft for a, a period of time. And we knew that number was somewhere around 55. We have to remember that in 2001, the satellite communication isn't what it is now. So the initial reaction from a lot of them was that they didn't necessarily want to divert. They didn't understand why they were being diverted. And we really, at that point, didn't have time to explain it to them all. So what transpired throughout the day is that we had a lot of crews that, A, didn't really understand why they had been sent where they were, and in some cases weren't even really 100% sure exactly where they were, as far as the local area and how far they were from their initial destinations and so on. But once everybody understood that it was an actual emergency, that the cooperation that we received from the air crews was outstanding. The cooperation from everybody, from the counterpart, our counterparts in the area control center who originally set everybody up for landing, the dispatchers from the various airlines, the airline crews, all the ground handlings, the cooperation was just fantastic. We didn't ask for anything that anybody said, no, we can't do that. Gander Airport, Aegis Kilo, Gander Weather 1800 Zulu. The biggest challenge that I encountered or experienced with managing the traffic was the fact that a diversion is an abnormal situation in that the aircraft generally comes to air traffic control and says, okay, we have to go somewhere and land. They tell us the reason why they want to go somewhere and land and then the controllers in the center figure out their routing to their, to their new destination and figure out if they're going to have to dump fuel, how they're going to set up dump and fuel. Normally, you'll get one. Sometimes, very rare occasion, you get two. On September 11th of 2001, they were dealing with basically 50 to 60 diversions in a very short period of time because of the 38 aircraft that went here, the 20 odd that went to St. John's, to, I think it was a half a dozen or so went to Stephenville. None of those aircraft had planned on landing in Newfoundland. So not only are they dealing with one aircraft dumping fuel, they're dealing with multiple aircraft dumping fuel, they're dealing with multiple aircraft being rerouted. And as I said earlier, the cooperation that we received from the air crews was fantastic. 